So, hi, Monique. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me this afternoon about the Nonprofit Council. I know that we're pre recording this for Partnership for Excellence, but I just really appreciate having you as our assembly member join us for this critical conversation. Happy to be here, happy to be talking about one of uh, my favorite topics in the legislature and policy topics, nonprofits um, as a sector. So thank you for convening us. Of course. So I guess just as you say, I know this is something near and dear to your heart and you've been a leader in your professional career working in the nonprofit sector and supporting on um, boards and different things, but you've been advocating for the nonprofit sector in the legislature and you worked and ultimately you worked to create and ultimately became the chair um, of the first ever select committee on the nonprofit sector back in 2017. So why has this work been a priority for you and why do you find it so important? Well, I think one of the reasons that the work related to nonprofits is important to me, it has to do with my own experience with the nonprofit sector in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. I served as a board member uh, for you know, a small number of nonprofits prior to being elected into the legislature. And it was really that experience that introduced me to the importance of the sector as a whole. Um, the importance for the sector to be able to do, in some cases, what government's not able to do, to fill in certain gaps um, in terms of what our community needs or desires uh, in different areas. And it's really that kind of interest and that connection and understanding that led me to uh, talk to people here in town and also work with Cal nonprofits in thinking about, well, what do we do at the legislative level? Um, and how do we bring a policy conversation around the nonprofits together? And uh, that is when in 2016, we decided um, a collective group, again, Jeff Green, Cal Nonprofits, um, a number of folks were involved in kind of generating this idea. What happens if we create a select committee on this topic? Um, a committee that will allow for informational hearings and dialogues uh, by legislators, with legislators and other subject matter experts around the issues that impact nonprofits. And uh, we were successful in establishing the first select committee on the nonprofit sector in 2016. It's still a select committee that is um, uh, alive and active. Uh, certainly how we engage and the types of hearings we have uh, under COVID are slightly different, but uh, it's never been more important to continue the conversation. I think so often, we think of nonprofits as, you know, we look at just one or two examples um, of those nonprofits we know, and we think of them in reference to what we know about one, but we don't always talk about them as a sector. Um, what does the sector need? What does the sector look like? Nonprofits is also a very big word. Um, so many different types of nonprofits are under um, that big kind of broad definition. And I like to remind folks that in California, the nonprofit sector is the fourth largest employer uh, in our state. And that's really meaningful. We're not talking about just millions of dollars in the sector, we're talking about billions in terms of what the nonprofit sector does um, and contributes and the outside grants they're bringing into the state. Well, thanks so much for that. And I apologize, I think I, I stole a year of your leadership because I thought the the, it all began in 2017, but you're correcting me with 16, so. No, and you are correct, actually. 2016 is when I got elected into the legislature and sworn in, so the conversation started in 2016, but officially, officially. the nonprofit was named in 2017, so you are correct. Great, that's, that's wonderful, and it's so, it's so wonderful that that early leadership um, has started, and I think it's a, a great place to build from as we move forward um, in years to come. And as you say, with the current pandemic, the needs for the nonprofit sector are just evolving and growing exponentially. So having that kind of a body at the state level is going to serve us um, moving forward. And I know that I was able to share with you the executive summary, our current draft executive summary of our, our proposed nonprofit council and it highlights you know, our three primary focus areas. If this were to be successful, what we wanna focus on is data collection and analysis. So who is, as you say, the sector is huge and what comprises the nonprofit sector? 
what are the data points that they're moving um, their work towards, uh, just how do we collect data and analyze the data about the sector? Um, how do we think of ourselves as a sector and how do we educate ourselves and educate others about the nonprofit sector being this mighty force, as you say? And then how do we turn that data and that self-knowledge and self-awareness into mobilization and advocacy? So those are our primary goals. And I'm just wondering what you think um, from where you sit, what the benefits would be of that kind of an effort? How, if this council were to exist, how would that assist you in your role as a legislator um, in order to advocate for policies that benefit nonprofits in your role in Sacramento? Absolutely. Well, I think that the structure, um, it, it would be particularly helpful to advocacy. Um, certainly, there's the aspects of, you know, impact communication and data um, collection and analysis that are very important. But on the advocacy side, I think what's also very important, and in some ways we've learned this through COVID, is that a united front and message uh, tends to allow for more of a response, a coordinated response from the state um, on some of these issues. And I say that because, you know, there are times where we have individual nonprofits reach out with a niche issue, right? Something that's very specific to them, the service they're doing, that particular issue. And sometimes it's a little bit dif uh, different, you know, in terms of how we're able to address it at the state level versus if it's a collective voice, a collective thought that is then brought to the state level and uh, we can address. I think oftentimes I also describe that perhaps some of the needs that come um, based on nonprofits uh, or from nonprofits is th they're regional also. And I think we have to be able to identify when they're regional or when they're statewide conversations. And so having a local county that has a conversation um, in this type of way that can influence uh, the advocacy that's happening at the state level, I think is really helpful. Um, it's good to know. We should know when there's regional issues, but we should also know when some of these are collective statewide issues. I'll give you one example. Um, very early in the pandemic, uh, we, you know, the state wasn't, it was early. I think responses were, you know, um, in very beginning stages and full, weren't fully developed as it related to, to the impact. But one of the things that we heard immediately from the nonprofit sector that was a collective statewide voice is, is there the ability in this moment in time with this difficult situation to ensure that we have some flexibility in how we use state funding and state grants, right? And so, the, so, so there's examples like that where quickly we were you know, elevating the issue. We had a letter um, that several members signed on to because it turns out that no matter where in the state, 58 counties, um, nonprofits were, that was going to be something that was going to help immediately, right? Um, and we knew that we had more of the ability to impact uh, something like that than, than what I think was happening um, across the board where everybody was asking for more funding during the time where we were watching our funds uh, slip away. So those are the types of examples that I could see coming from these collective conversations. And again, if there's regional issues, and we know there have been, um, you know, when you reflect to the end of 2017 and 2018, the impact that wildfires and then the debris flow had on us definitely impacted nonprofits in a regional way. We saw many more nonprofits um, locally looking to address ways that they could help um, the, the recovery process for Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. Um, and I think that that was something important and knowing what kinds of elements we could change or we could adopt to help these nonprofits, help the state, help local agencies, um, help our community was something that I think that the state was very open to trying to identify. Well, and I think what you're saying too is, I mean, so many of the issues that nonprofits are working on are their complex issues. So housing issues or environmental justice issues or climate change, there's no one agency or no one entity that interfaces on these things. So I think the mobilization of a multifaceted approach um, really gives us power at the local and regional, but then obviously to amplify that voice at the state level so that we can work in partnership to really bring um, 
a plethora of voices on behalf of these really complex issues. So I think it would be a really useful pairing. Um, I guess I'd love to know a little bit more since you founded and started the select committee, where you think those efforts are headed, both in the assembly and the Senate. Could there be a joint committee to further increase um, the visibility and the power of the nonprofit sector in the state legislature? Just if you had a, if you had a magic eight ball and you could, um, or uh, and just ask questions about where we're heading, what, what do you see coming? Yeah, well, I think it would be great um, that as we look to 2021 and what could come out of 2021, um, that the conversations were uh, bicameral, right? The state Senate and the state assembly. Um, at this moment, the state assembly has led the conversations on the nonprofit sector, uh, but certainly I think that there's interest in the state Senate to also be part of those conversations. And so we will be working with Cal nonprofits and many of the nonprofits um, that we all represent to identify what that looks like. How do you have bicameral conversations? Does that look like a joint you know, committee um, or does that look like legislation? I also, you know, the thing about these select committees is that they've translated into actual legislation. Um, so this year uh, in July, we were very excited that we launched the uh, grants.ca.gov um, website for funding opportunities for nonprofits and others um, related to state. And this is something that came directly from the conversations we had from nonprofits. As I think I came to you, Monique, and said, Monique, please help you us with totally did. repository. <laughs> You did. You and other EDs um, from nonprofits would come to me, would come, you know, we would have conversations about uh, what was happening locally. And one of the questions was, was how do we find funding uh, through the state? And I took that to heart. I took that seriously. It was part of the conversations we had. We moved forward a bill. And I know sometimes it sounds a, a little interesting that we have to move forward a bill in order to, uh, to get a website created. Um, but that was the case. And so we moved forward a bill and in July 15th of this year, we were able to launch this site, um, which is the beginning, right? It's going to be, I think, more evolved and advanced soon, but it's the beginning of a way to identify and meet the need of nonprofits because it's a mutual partnership. Nonprofits absolutely play an important role in our community. We need them. We know that government alone can't do everything as, you know, neither can private sector. So, so that's where nonprofits come into play um, and we want to be supportive of, of ways that we can help nonprofits. Um, so, so that's something that, um, you know, came out of our conversations. Uh, you can take credit for being one of the people who came to me and said, Monique, how do we do this? Um, but it's exactly those issues that we want to be able to address. And regrettably, I don't think that with the year that we've had in 2020, we're going to be, um, sh you know, we're, we're, we're certainly not going to be... Uh, uh, short on issues. I think that if anything, we have more issues that we are going to be dealing with with 2021. Um, I think like small businesses, nonprofits are going to see a change potentially, um, it, you know, in their economic um, solvency. Um, and that's something that we think of a lot. Uh, we want our nonprofits to be healthy. We want our nonprofits to continue to do the work. But in a time of, you know, health impact um, and a time of a global pandemic, and certainly the economic impacts, we're not sure where things are gonna land. And for those reasons, I think it's gonna be even more important that in 2021, we have the discussions, that we try to amplify those discussions to help our nonprofit community. Well, I think we're running close on, on our time limit. And so I, I just wanna say thank you. I think you have been such a powerful advocate and partner for those of us in the nonprofit sector, both individual agencies, but collectively and your leadership in creating this new body um, at the state level um, has just been instrumental for all of us. So uh, we have a deep indebtedness on behalf of my colleagues that have been starting this nonprofit council, but also on behalf of everyone that participates in PFE. We just, we are indebted to you for your leadership. Thank you for not only remembering the nonprofit sector, but advocating that we should have a place at the table and that our voice matters on these critical issues and that 
as you say, it's a multi-sector society that we live in. So there's a role for the for-profit sector, there's a role for the public sector, and there's a role for the social sector or the nonprofit sector. And uh, we need to work collaboratively. And I think that's really a goal of this nonprofit council to mobilize our power and to be of use for policy decisions. So. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I don't know if you have any closing comments you want to make, but thank you for everything well, you're doing. Yeah, I want to thank you. I want to thank all the participants of PFE. Um, it's something that I've been a part of um, in the past, and I think uh, the opportunity to gather um, collectively raise issues, I think, has always been important. And um, I'm excited to see where this particular initiative goes, um, what we're able to do as a community, um, and I think that the connections that we have even personally are, are great because I, I hope to be able to take some of what happens here at the county level, at the local level, to the state level, right? Um, and, and try to identify if there's bigger uh, ways that we can try to address some of these problems because we're all going to need to work together um, for the 2021. It's going to be a potentially hard year. And I think that uh, doing so by working you know, through a collective process um, ensures better outcomes. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I just think the future for the nonprofit sector is a bright one, but it's going to be a challenging one. And I think we have to work smarter, not harder. And so if we can create efficiencies, the workload is just getting bigger and bigger and the needs are amplifying. So if we can mobilize our resources in ways that really help and support you, and we can lead at the county level, lead at the state level, that's just gonna have greater benefit, ultimately for the folks that rely on the sector for service provision or enhancement of the community. So I think it's a win-win-win. So, well, I'm excited that you're excited and we will keep you posted as we learn more about where the, where the council's going. And uh, again, thank you for being a champion for our sector. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating, and thanks for leading this conversation, Alina. All right. Take care, Monique. Take care. Thank you.